Hi, my name is Stephen Fluen, and I want to share a little bit about animating route changes within an Angular application. Animations within Angular have a lot of different powers and different capabilities. They're really awesome at the way that they take a state that exists within your application and then convert that into visual information that helps your users understand what's going on within the application. One of the really cool things that recently became available is the ability to animate across different routes of my application. So that as a user is navigating within my application, I can reflect those navigation changes by animations that show the user leaving one page and entering another. So let's go ahead and take a look at a existing Angular application that I've built. So this is uh, Fluent.io. This is a blog application that I've built uh, entirely in Angular. And so this was built using the CLI uh, and looks a lot like most Angular applications. You've got different components that are loaded using the router. So for example, when I click on a piece of content here, such as this blog post, that content's going to load and render on, via a different URL and a different component. So as I move back and forth, everything's loading instantly. But I think we can make this a little bit better by adding uh, animations that reflect the hierarchy of the application in order to indicate meaning as I'm moving about the application. So let's dive into the code. So in this application, uh, we have a lot of normal things that you're going to be used to seeing. So we've got an app component, we've got a CSS file, uh, and we've got a set of different routes uh, corresponding to that app. Uh, and so we're really going to follow a, a small three-step process. First, we're going to dive into the CSS to make sure that we're able to show two routes simultaneously in a way that we would expect. Then we're going to go ahead and save all of our route data. So we're going to add this additional layer of information about the routes that exist in our application, uh, giving us basically the depth that every route exists at so that we know how we want to animate that and transition that. Uh, and then lastly, we'll go ahead and create the animation itself. So let's get started. So as we can see here in my uh, app components HTML file uh, in the template, we can see we've got a router outlet and I've already got a div that's wrapping around this outer outlet, router outlet. And so what I'm going to do is because I want to style all of the components that this router outlet is loading, uh, I'm going to actually need to create a class on the parent. And uh, we need to do this because components that are loaded into an application and you're next to a a router outlet don't actually go inside of the router outlet as I said they go next to it and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say class equals route container and this will give us the ability to style both this box uh, as well as all of the components that get loaded into it uh, as the uh, transitions are happening and as components are being loaded so they're entering the scene as well as when they're leaving the scene so let's go ahead and use this style and now look for our router outlet uh, and right next to that I'm going to say route container. We're going to do two things. First, we're going to go ahead and position this relative. What this will allow us to do is, uh, me, is allow us to uh, take all of the children elements and position them absolute and we'll know that they are going to be uh, absolutely positioned according to the relative parent that they've got. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to take all of the uh, components that get loaded into this, so any subchild of this, of the route container, uh, and we're going to go ahead and display that block. So by default, uh, Angular components are display inline, uh, but we want to change that over to block so that when we give it a size and width and shape and things like that, uh, those stick uh, differently than they would if it was just inline. So once we've got these two styles, uh, now we can go ahead and start adding the metadata to our routes that allow us to understand where they are in the hierarchy that will then later be used as part of these state transitions. Uh, this should look relatively familiar. You've got things like uh, my home component being done at the empty path, and uh, then we've got specific blog posts that I can view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the existing data that's already here. So I set up a couple title attributes that are just custom that I came up with that allow you to understand uh, what the title of the page should be. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and add a couple things. We're going to add a depth of one here. And we're going to add a depth of two here. And now this will be used by the application in order to understand the state of the app based on the current route that's been loaded into the router outlet. But I'm going to start doing this right inside of our template here. And so I'm going to use our property binding syntax with the special Angular animation syntax. So you're going to see this at sign. Uh, and I'm going to say route animation. And so this is not a, a directive or a property of a div. This is just going to be the way that we invoke and name an animation that we're going to be triggering. And then the expression here is actually the state uh, that the animation is checking for those transitions. And so the state that we want here from our expression is going to be the depth of the current page. Now there's no actual way to get this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method called getDepth. And I'm going to use the router outlet itself in order to get that depth. 
Um, and in order to use the router outlet itself, I'm going to create a local template variable called my outlet, and I'm going to give it access to the outlet. Um, so now that we've got this get depth method, uh, and I'm passing in the outlet, let's go ahead and define that get depth method. So I'm going to jump into the associated app component here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new method called get depth, and it's going to take this router outlet that we're passing in. And here, I'm going to go ahead and use that router outlet, look at its properties, and figure out what data attribute exists on it, and then return that. So I'm going to say return outlet dot activated route data, and then I'm going to say depth, which is the, the property that we came up with that we named, we added in the route. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and return that so that our animation has a set of states. Now that we've got those states, uh, and if I save this, this should re-render by the language services so that we know that we've got that method right. Great. Uh, now I'm actually going to go ahead and define the animation within my app component. And so the way we do this is we add an animation to our component. And in order to do this successfully, we're actually going to need a few additional imports here. So I'm going to import all of the, the methods that I'm going to be using from the animations library. And so this is going to include things like trigger, transition, group, query, style, and animate. And we're going to get all of these from at angular slash animations. All right, so let's go ahead and descend into the hierarchy that is the configuration used in the animations. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be triggering animations uh, for a specific uh, component or for a specific element on our page that we're uh, doing this animation on. And so we came up with the name route animation. So I'm going to say trigger based on route animation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it in an array. And so what this array is going to contain is all of the transitions that exist uh, and that should be activated upon changes to the state of that route animation. So we're going to create a couple transitions here, but we'll just start with one. And so what I'm going to say is when I move from depth one to depth two, so our state one to state two, I'm going to go ahead and do all of the things in this array. And there's going to be four things in this array. We're going to have a style, two queries, and then we're going to have a group of animations. So the style and the two queries basically get us set up uh, for the initial state of the animation, and then our group will do two animations at the same time. And so the first style that I'm going to set is I'm going to set the height of the component. Uh, so if you remember, we're animating on the div here, the route container. And so when I say style height is equal to exclamation point here, what that means is let's go ahead and at the beginning of the animation, set the height of the element equal to the height that it would be at the end of the animation. Uh, next, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say query. And what I'm going to query for is the enter element. So this is one of the cool new features of Angular animations that allows you to actually take not just the element that you're animating, but also children. And you can do additional things with them. And that's something we, we rely on heavily here. And what I'm going to do for the enter element is I'm going to apply a style. And what I'm going to do is say at the beginning of the animation, I want to transform this. And I'm going to translate its X position to 100%. And so what this will, should do for me is it will take, instead of placing the route directly on the page, I'm actually going to have it a little bit offset so that it's going to animate into the page uh, so that we know that it's visually entering the scene uh, and it's giving me the information now that I want. The only other thing that I need to do in my second query here is I'm going to take both my enter and my leave routes. I'm going to go ahead and apply an initial style that allows us to position these things exactly as we want to. And so I'm going to make it position absolute. And then I'm going to make the top position zero. I'm going to make the left position zero, right zero, just so that it takes up the full page uh, and everything cascades appropriately. Uh, and now we actually want to do, now that we've set this state up uh, for the initial uh, animation, now we want to actually define what the animation does. And so I'm going to make a group so that I can do two animations at the same time. Uh, and the two things I'm going to give it are I'm going to take the item that is leaving the scene. So this is the component uh, that was previously the one that the user had navigated to. And I'm going to say, let's animate. And I'm going to say, let's give it 0.3 seconds to, take, to animate. And let's use a cubic Bezier curve. Uh, and I'll just use some pre-configured numbers here, uh, 0.25 and 1. Uh, and so what this will do is it'll give a little bit more natural curve as it's accelerating out of the scene. Uh, and then I'm going to apply this animation here, uh, and I'm going to apply a style. And that style is going to be a transform where uh, the item that is leaving, I want to take it where it started at 0, the default, and I'm going to move it to negative 100. So I'm going to move it kind of off of the scene here. So I'm going to say uh, translate x property, and I'm going to say negative 100%. 
and then we make sure we close all the things appropriately. Uh, and now we're going to want to do a very similar thing for the item that is entering. And we're going to animate it. Oh, we need a bracket there. Uh, and let's just go ahead and copy pretty much everything here. Uh, but instead of the item that is uh, entering being translated to negative 100, I'm going to translate it from the 100 that it started at. Now I'm going to slowly, over 0.3 uh, seconds, animate it into the initial position. So we've got a tr uh, the animation or the trigger that tells us which piece we're actually animating. I've got the transition that identifies the two states I'm moving between. Uh, I'm setting up the initial style of the parent element. I'm setting up the uh, initial position of the enter element, and I'm positioning everything position absolute so that I can take complete control of where they are on the page. Uh, and then I'm going to use uh, slowly animate over 0.3 seconds, both the leave item leaving and the enter item entering the scene. All right, so now let's flip over to our application and see if this worked. We have our blog here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on one of the blog posts from the home screen. Great. We saw the uh, original piece of content slide out, and we're gonna, we saw the new piece of content slide in. What happens if we go back? Nothing, because we, we don't have a route defined or a transition defined from state two to state one. So let's go ahead and copy everything we just did here. Take our transition from one to two, and now say from two to one. And then instead of going off to 100, we're gonna say negative 100. And then here we're going to just flip these numbers. So this one's going to go positive, and the entering is going to end up at zero. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see if that added the corresponding animation when you now leave. So when I click into a piece of content, the piece of content floats in. And then when I return using either the back button or navigation, both are equivalent from the routing perspective, we see the piece of content slide back in. So we have this very nice kind of back and forth that really corresponds with the content to tell the user, where am I within the application? So now we've set up a hierarchy within our application. We've added some animations that give the user this nice visual reflection of what's going on with the application. And we're finished with our hierarchical retting application. Thanks so much. Hope to see you in the next one.